Hi everyone, my name is Rosamond Kember. This is a tutorial for the BEM 2423 real time interactive students enrolled in the architectural computing degree at the University of New South Wales. This tutorial is going to take you through the process of exporting objects from 3D Studio Max 2012 and into CryEngine 3. This tutorial is assuming that you've already installed the plugins for Photoshop and for 3D Studio Max. The link for how to install these is on the course outline page and it will take you to the official documentation on the CryDev website. I have already downloaded the Barcelona Pavilion folder from the course folder so I'm going to go and put that into the objects folder of my FreeSDK. Once that's in there, I'll open up Max. The first thing that you'll need to do is check that the path is correct to the right version of the CryEngine SDK version that you're using. So to do that, you click on the buttons and navigate to the top level of the SDK folder. That's my version there. The next thing that you'll need to do is click on the Utilities, utilities tab and add a new button. So I think it, it, by default it comes in as 9, change that to 10 and if you scroll all the way down you'll see the CryEngine 3 exporter and you just drag that onto your new button and you should see it here now. Now you'll need to check your unit setup so go to Customize unit setup, click on system unit setup, make sure that it's one unit equals one centimeters and that it's metric and centimeters. Now it's really handy to utilize the snaps toggle when you're modeling in Max. So if you right click on snaps toggle, I often work with the vertex ticked on. Now if you just left click it will toggle on and off or alternatively you can use S on your keyboard. I'll turn it on and then I'll come over to the create tab and select box. So middle mouse button is pan, alt and middle mouse button is to rotate around an object and with snaps turned on I'm going to use the existing SketchUp geometry trace over. If I press F3 I'll bring up wireframe mode and it can sometimes make it easier to snap to things. Okay, so to select just these three objects, I can go up to select by name or press H. And I'm going to select the first, I mean, sorry, the three boxes that I've just created. Now, if I press Alt and Q, it's just going to isolate those three objects. I'll just give it, a bit, give it a bit of thickness. Now go to cgtextures.com and download three different materials. I've already downloaded three and I'm going to open up Photoshop. And bring all three in.
So these are good because they're tiled, but they're not actually the right dimensions for crisis. So we need to uh, we need to change the image size of each and then save them out using the cry to fix border. So if I go image, image size and change that to be I might make that 512 by 512 and do that for each or I can just press control alt and I and now we need to save them to where our Barcelona Pavilion Max file is in our objects folder. So file save as. So I'll do this for all three. Under format, change it to Creative plugin. And it should bring up this dialog box. So we want to use the diffuse, low, preset and increase the resolution twice. So I'll go and pause the tutorial and do that to the others. Now if I go to my objects Barcelona pavilion folder we should see the three to files there. Now we need to assign these to our three boxes in Max. So to do that we need to bring up the material editor so press M and now we're going to be creating a multi-sub object material so one material file that's going to contain up to 32 different textures but for us we'll just use three so select any slot and where it says standard click on multi-sub object and discard the old material because we're only using three we'll change that to three So call your material file something appropriate. I'll call mine Barcelona Pavilion. And then under the first slot I'm going to choose standard and call it brick. Now we need to change the shader to Crytek Cry shader and tick physical eyes so that we don't walk through our walls and floors. And I'm going to toggle off the lock and click on the box next to diffuse and this is where I'm going to assign the brick texture that I just made in Photoshop. So by default 3D Studio Max uses spaces and hashtags in its naming convention. That's no good for crisis so we always re re need to rename our textures. I'm going to call my brick diff because it's going to come into the diffuse tab of my textures and I'm going to show shader material in viewport. So I'll do that for the next two. Standard marble 01 change to Crytek shader, tick physical eyes, toggle off the lock, choose bitmap, rename and show in viewport. So t now we need to assign it to our three boxes. So select all three by holding down control and clicking. And choose assign material to selection. Now you can see that it's all st stretched it's quite strangely and uh, each face has a different material applied to it. So we need to fix that up.
So what I'm going to do is, well I can either do a UVW map on all three at the same time, so I might as well do that. Save some time. Choose box mapping. And do around 200. Might make it a bit bigger. Now to collapse the stack in the modifier window, I can just right click and convert to editable poly. Or I could just choose one, UVW map that, and I can expand the UVW map and use the gizmo to change and to play around with the with the mapping and press collapse all to get rid of that. So now we need to fix up the fact that different materials are assigned to each face. So to do that, choose one of the boxes and click on element and click it again and it should highlight it up all in red. Now if I scroll down under polygon material IDs, this is where it assigns each of the materials and textures that I've just created over in the material editor. <coughs> so if I just want it to be in the brick, I would change it to just one. And then it's going to map all of it in, in the brick texture. The next thing I need to do is to clear all the smoothing groups and auto smooth it and it should just bring up the first three. So I repeat on the next box, click element, select it all, change it to two. Clear the smoothing groups and auto smooth. Now these objects are all ready to export, but if you want them to line up really nicely in in Crisis, there's one thing that we can do to make that possible. I'm going to create a dummy and link all three boxes to that dummy and then just export the dummy across. That way all three boxes will use the same axis as the dummy and it, it'll they'll all link up really nicely. So to do that we come into Create cross to helpers and bring in a dummy. I'm going to name this dummy Barcelona Pavilion. And I'm going to, using the world coordinates, I'm going to change its position to be 000. zero, zero. So the way that linking works is that you choose the fir you choose the child objects, which are the boxes, and then you link it to the dummy helper. So you select and link, and it should bring up this funny overlapping boxes symbol. And I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and drag across, and it should bring up the same um, symbol and turn white once it's linked. Another way of doing is that is selecting the three boxes and then pressing coming up to select by name and it will give you an option of linking to the Barcelona Pavilion dummy. Um, to end linking I press move and that way I can select the dummy and test that the, th the objects are linked to the dummy. I'm going to export the material first so I need to come to the top layer of my of my material file and copy the name come into the CryEngine 3 exporter um, click create material 
if crisis isn't already open you'll have to press that button twice but I've got it open at the moment and you have to navigate to objects Barcelona pavilion where your max file is saved and now you can see that all three textures are in under the heading Barcelona pavilion so as I've said before you can have up to 32 different textures all in the one file and this is really handy because you can it means you just have to create one file and apply it to different objects now I'm going to export the the dummy So what I need to do is, with the dummy selected, choose Add Selected, and you should see it under the Object Export. And now it's really important to tick ex Export File Per Node. And then I can press Export Nodes. I'm going to reload my, my objects. Sometimes, you know, it didn't come in quite, didn't show the materials very well, so sometimes if you, if you begin to assign surface types and change the diffuse colour to the default, which is 187, 187, 187, it should get itself in order. So I'll just change that for all three. And that looks a bit better.